Hello, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and I'm here with my co-host, Craig Pasqua. OCO, Rose. Yeah, uh-huh. OCO. OCO. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional Cherokee greeting. All right. Welcome to all of you, and this is Native Voice TV. We're here with Tony Redhouse, and we're really excited to have Tony with us today. Welcome, Tony. Thank you very much. Tony's here all the way from Tucson, Arizona, and he's on his California tour. Yes. And you've stopped by before when you've been on your California tour, and I'm so glad you stopped by again because yes. we always like to bring you in. You have so many talents, <laughs> and we barely just touched the surface with you coming here and interviewing with us and playing some music, but we have so much we still want to see. I so we're going to have to keep you coming. Here. Thank you very much. <laughs> so how you been, Tony? I've been busy. Busy. Uh, but it's been good and doing some really meaningful work and uh, and uh, sharing with different groups of people. Okay. Yes. And what does your California tour consist of? It uh, is going to be doing a number of events in Mountain View at East West Bookstore, a concert, uh, drumming, circle, Native American uh, dreamcatcher making, uh, private healing sessions I'll be doing for two days, and then Sacramento, doing a couple uh, women's groups up there, uh, circles, and then uh, Santa Cruz. I'll be doing uh, a meditation and then talking circle ceremony. Um, and uh, so it's going to be pretty busy. Yeah. Yeah, you do stay busy. Yeah. yeah. And you have quite a following here in Northern California. Yeah, I have. Or no. People are really beautiful here. They're, they're um, really appreciative of my work, and, I, and I'm glad to come out here. We're very happy to yes. have you. Now, you just received an award, award in Tucson. Tell us about that. Yes, that was the uh, uh, Tucson Musicians Museum. I was oh, inducted wow. into the Museum Hall of Fame. <laughs> so, wow, congratulations. So in uh, the, the community center, there's a wall with different uh, photographs of different musicians that are honored for their work. And mine was basically for my music with uh, using in drug addiction centers and mm -hmm. hospice and with cancer patients, so using it as a healing tool. You have uh, so many titles because it's uh, you're a healer, you a speaker, a hoop dancer, I know you play the flute, you write, you just have so many talents. Tell us a little bit about your healing. And I know you said you've worked with cancer patients. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, uh, I use Native American uh, sound healing, which is, you might hear about this in New Age circles and that type of thing. But I use uh, traditional Native American drum, the voice, and the flute. And I use those simple tools to uh, guide people to a sacred, peaceful space. Because if we can go to that space uh, within ourself and let all of the complications and drama and everything else, the layers of things, go and come down to that simple place and that simple heartbeat, then it has a way of taking us back to a very simple existence and a very true existence. And we begin to see clearly what we need in our life, whether it's healing, whether we need clear direction, uh, answers for you know what to do next in life, whether we need to remain in a relationship, whether we need to let go of it, uh, same thing with a career. So when we come to a peaceful place, uh, a meditative place, then we can begin to see clearly. And, and that's what I do, and then I do some intuitive work as I'm working with people and guide them. So if you're working with someone, who maybe is not used to this, how do you get them in that special place, the healing place? The beautiful thing about sound is it's non-intrusive. When it's, when it's gentle heartbeat, okay? It's, it reminds you of, of the, the mother, of the womb. Uh, it's very comforting. And from that place, using that sound and that vibration, uh, I can begin to speak and I can begin to guide them to a healing place. Even begin to, to bring up things uh, in their life that they might begin to see and then they are aware of what they need healing for. Uh, so it's taking them on a journey using sound. Oh, okay. And then when they're in that journey, they just let go and they're just in there and then they begin, things begin coming up and they begin to see things, maybe childhood when they were abused or, you know, things start coming up and then then they go, oh, I forgot all about that. Mm. And then they realize this is what has been something that has been ongoing in their life, that energy, and maybe they need to go back and heal it. Uh, and many times even cancer, 
uh, different diseases are, are, is a, are ways that our body is reflecting the things that have happened to us emotionally or in our memories. Even for Native Americans, uh, generational trauma you know, that right. has happened mm -hmm. uh, that we are still dealing with that has been passed down through generations and we begin to go back and say, hey, there's something that I'm, you know, that I'm constantly dealing with this issue and this unrest and unsettledness and then, hey, my, my, my parents did this, my mom went through this, my grandparents did this and they felt the same way and why am I dealing with this addiction problem, you know, and, and why do mm -hmm. I keep, you know, wanting to get high and escape and so we, we can go back in time and rewind the clock and you usually find the answers in the very beginning, the start of our circle of life. You have a new CD out. What's a DVD? A DVD mm -hmm. out. And um, tell us about that. Is this part of the healing? Yeah, it's sound? actually, uh, when I speak about healing and speak about recovery, okay, basically mm -hmm. recovery and healing, whether it's addiction, whether it's from cancer, uh, whether it's from losing a loved one, grieving process, uh, you know, Healing is, it, we, we kind of try to analyze it and, and we have books on it and you know how to, when to, what type of healing. Basically what I'm teaching is healing is basically being one with yourself. When our body and our mind and our soul and our emotions are all lined up and they are in unity, then there are no free radicals, there's no cancer. You know, there aren't independent cells saying, well, well I wanna do this and I wanna go here everything is lined up together, that's what healing is, is being one with ourself, mind, body, and soul. And when we're there, then we're in a healing state. That's why when you're, when you're listening to a heartbeat drum or you're in a yoga class or you're in meditation, you experience healing. You come out of a yoga class, I'm also a yoga teacher, and you come out of a yoga class and you go, wow, I feel good. I feel clear, I feel free, I feel, uh, effortless because your body and your mind and your breathing and everything have been lined up in those asanas that you're doing and in, in that moment everything is together and so if you go to a powwow and you hear the drums you know you hear those drums and you just close your eyes then your body starts responding and say, says oh let's all pulse together like with that heartbeat okay mm -hmm. uh, and then you start doing a round dance with everybody else then you got the whole community is being healed because we're all one. Right. This world is fragmented. Religions, politics, you know, it's fragmenting things and everyone is divided. It's true. If I could use an analogy, um, me being um, playing tennis and being a tennis professional, mm -hmm. when I played really well, I would get into something called a zone. And at that particular so, time, you know, no matter where I was, I could hit the ball, very clearly, I could see everything very clear, everything was crystal clear, and uh, I just felt effortless whenever I went through the motions of, of hitting the ball. And usually I performed really well, and that was my goal, was to get back into that, that, that zone, zone state. Uh, sometimes you lose it, somebody yelling, yeah. <laughs> so you're getting mad and you know getting out of balance. Yeah. But the goal was always to get into that. And, it was uh, kind of an elusive goal. It was a fleeting goal sometimes because I couldn't get it. And um, maybe if I had a trick or something like that to help me get back into that, yep. that zone, um, I would have performed better. Right, yeah. right. And so now, this you, DVD you, is a, a meditation yeah. DVD. Okay. So it, it, is a, it is a tool that people can use. It's not a long drawn out thing. It's 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. There are two segments, but it is a, a meditative tool that can help people. They can visually look at something they can hear the music and they can go into this place of, of peace and get uh, grounded and get clear and then they can go on their merry way in their life, in their career, go to work, whatever they need to do or spend time with their family in a healthy way, you know. So it is actually a tool that can help people to come to that place. And so these are very simple tools. Um, this DVD, Hearts Cry, the music that I created is new music and it was from a dream. Oh. I had a dream. And that dream was about a bird named Crete. And in my dream, I, I, wrote, I woke up and I wrote down in my dream, dream journal, Crete. And so I, I wrote K-R-I-I-T. And I woke up and I looked on the computer. 
so I had this dream about this bird named Crete, and the, the forces or the people that are in my dreams, they told me, you need to heal this bird named Crete. So this little bird named Crete, I was supposed to heal it. And in the dream, the bird healed itself, and it turned into an orange bird. Oh, wow. Into an orange, fiery, creative, passionate bird. Orange is like that fire color, right? Uh, and so it, it healed itself. And when I looked up the word Crete in, on the internet, which is, you know, you could Google everything now, right? <laughs> so I looked up the word Crete and I spelled it different ways. And I found that word and it's a, and it's of Danish or Estonian origin. And it means a cry that is so deep and pure that it cannot be contained in words. Wow. Okay? Mm. And I thought, you know, that's exactly what this song is gonna be about. It's gonna be a heart's cry. Craig, uh, Tony gifted us with uh, a DVD, which th thank yes, you very thank much. Yes, thank you very much. So. And he also gave three more for our viewers. So the first three viewers that comment that they saw the show, they'd like a DVD on Facebook. We'll give them the three that you gave us. Yes. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. I look forward to hearing it. Now, today you're going to be playing music for us. Mm -hmm. What kind of music shall, will we be I'm hearing? going to be using a little bit, a little taste of some of this type of music. Uh, I, I use Native American flute, mm -hmm. and I use the heartbeat drum, and I use other percussive sounds and other tones. Uh, bird whistles from Brazil, uh, a wind whistle from the Aztec people, which is gifted to me. Uh, a singing bowl from the uh, from the Asian community, uh, and so I use an, an different sounds to show the commonality and show the harmony of all of our sounds and cultures coming together. So I'll be sharing a little bit of meditation music, uh, and and take people on a little bit of a peaceful journey. Oh, that's great. Tell me about the uh, dream catchers. Okay. There's some beautiful dream catchers. The dream here. catchers. I will be uh, teaching a class. I teach classes uh, on a regular basis with drug addiction centers. And I also teach classes here on my tour in the Bay Area. And so people have the opportunity to make a traditional dream catcher. Uh, and the two elements that are healing elements, uh, I explain what those are and how uh, you can capture the one thing that causes bad dreams, causes conflict, causes unrest and that is that bead that you put in the center. It's like a dew drop on a spider web early in the morning and that dew drop will eventually evaporate. And so that bead is gonna represent what I want to evaporate from my life, okay? What is weight, what's weighing on me? And so it's something personal that I want to evaporate. We can't say, well, I want my ex to evaporate or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> pearl officer to evaporate, okay? It's gotta, it's gotta be something. Else. And the feather is a channel to carry all of your good dreams to float down to where you're sleeping underneath it. So that's the twofold effect in the Ojibwe uh, nation. That's what, what, how they made them. And, and so many times we see them uh, in different ways, but this is what I'm teaching. Oh, how nice. And does um, the web, what is it Spider represent? web. Sp That's so a spider web. Just like you'd see a spider web, web okay. early in the morning on a rose bush or in a forest, uh -huh. and you would see those dew drops. So it's actually like the web of your life, and each section that you weave, you're doing it intentionally. You're so taking it, time to, to, ba to do it in a balanced way, so it's not just mishmash or any old way. But as Native Americans, when we make things, whether it's beadwork or basketry or anything, we take time and each movement is very uh, meaningful because it creates the whole composition in the end. It creates a balance. So we take the time to make sure that each section is approximately the same, uh -huh. okay? Then it creates a balanced picture in the end. And so what I'm teaching is that when you make a decision in life, it's like weaving one section. If you make decisions that are balanced and intentional, and you're not just going along with what everybody wants, and you're saying, this is what I want in my life, then your circle will be balanced. Your life circle will be balanced in the end. So this is what I'm teaching people. And that's what we're all looking we for, is that balance. Yes. Well, I think we're out of time, and that's why you have to keep coming back so <laughs> we can <laughs> catch up on all that you're doing. 
And but we don't. We want to talk to you more, but we want to hear your mu music yeah. too. Okay. <laughs> We're really anxious to hear your music. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank and, you for um, having me. Let's hear some music. It's an honor. The Native American drum, the heartbeat rhythm, the pulse, which unites our footsteps, motivates us to dance, sing our songs, that brings us together as community. Native Americans uh, feel the heartbeat. It unites us. And so when you take this to a macro level and you take the Native American drum, and when all of us as Native Americans unite our hearts, our intentions, our desire, be at peace with each other, different nations, tribes, when we all come together as one people, then when we touch other cultures, then we can be able to see how all of the rhythms, all of the cultures, all of the beliefs come together and create beautiful harmony in the universe. We need healing in the universe right now. And if all of us, all people, nations come together, then there will be healing in this world. So you're going to be able to hear how compatible the Native American heartbeat rhythm is with Afro-Cuban, salsa, Latin, funk, soul. All the drums in the world are a reflection of us as people. So we're going to unite now as a heartbeat. So here our hearts are uniting together. Individual, unique heartbeats, journeys, stories, experiences. Each of, our, each of us have our own unique heartbeat, our own unique drum. But we become one heartbeat. It becomes a sound of harmony. The three different tones that come from our lives, our experiences, the things that have stretched us, the challenges, the ups and downs, the loss of our loved ones, the pain, the hurt, the celebration, the joy, they're all part of the stretching process of a drum of our lives. So we each have our own unique sound. And now I'm going to transition. We're going to keep the heartbeat going the Native American heartbeat, and we're going to see how it's able to unite with other styles of drumming. And so I'm going to go over to the congas now. And I'm going to create other rhythms using the conga drum. Mixes with the Motown, Soul 
algorithm. Thank you. 